Welcome. You are listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 509. Today, we're talking about developing martial arts speed and the new Whistlekick Speed Development Program. My name is Jeremy Lesniak, your host on the show, founder of Whistlekick, where everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to know more about what we do, you can go to whistlekick.com. That's our online home. It's the place to find our store with our speed development program, our strength and conditioning program, and all the other stuff that we make and provide. And if you use the code PODCAST15, that'll save you 15% off every single thing over there. Now, this show, Martial Arts Radio, gets its own website, and that is whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you head over there, you'll find every single episode we've ever done, and transcripts, and all kinds of stuff. We release two episodes every single week, and our goal with this show is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists throughout the world. And if I might say so myself, based on the last few days' email, we're doing a pretty good job. If you want to show your appreciation for what we do, you can do quite a few things. You can make a purchase, like the program we're going to talk about today, and just as an aside, no, we're not just talking about the program. I'm going to give you some real actionable information regardless of whether you buy the program. I think hopefully you all know me but well enough by now. I'm not only here to sell you stuff. You could also share an episode. This may be a different one. You can follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick every single place you could imagine. You could tell a friend about what we're doing. Maybe pick up one of our books at Amazon, leave a review, or support the Patreon. Patreon.com. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash whistlekick. That's a place where we post exclusive content. And if you participate, if you sponsor us with as little as $2 a month, we're going to give you more content. Curious about upcoming episodes? It's the only place we talk about it. Looking for additional audio and video? Well, we post stuff over there. Exclusive stuff that only goes to Patreon. And as we get more Patreon contributors, we are ramping up what we're doing over there. We're not going to pull back what we do elsewhere, but we will do more as you all chip in more. Because let's face it, the economics have to work. Like I said at the top, today we're talking about speed. Speed is critical in martial arts. There's nothing that isn't improved with the capacity to go faster. I'm not saying everything has to be faster, but as you develop your speed, you're gaining the ability to perform movements faster. If you know anything about Superfoot, Bill Wallace, who graced us here on episode 14, I think it was, he is fond of talking about speed as a critical importance of power. That the faster you go, the less strength you need to apply to knock somebody down or out or whatever you're trying to do. Speed makes everything easier. Speed is the essence of war according to Sun Tzu. Hopefully, I don't have to convince you of the importance of speed. If I do, you've probably already stopped listening to this episode. But you might be saying, Jeremy, I'm already pretty fast. Well, maybe you are. But this is one aspect of martial arts that most of the classes, the instructors that I've observed, get horribly wrong. It ignores the science, it ignores the way that the body operates. Here's an example. We know that the central nervous system drives the body. It's the powerhouse. It's what determines how fast, how strong, how coordinated. It's what handles so many things within our body. And it's really good at adapting if you give it the right stimulus. If you listen to our episode on the strength and conditioning program, you heard me talk about the importance of repair versus adaptation. If I do enough repetitions of a movement with some sort of resistance, let's say push-ups, if I do the right number of push-ups, my body gets stronger. If I don't do enough, no adaptation happens. But if I do too many, no adaptation happens because the body's going to put all of its energy into repair, recovery, healing, because evolutionarily speaking, it's more important to survive than to adapt. They're not always the exact same thing. And we see that with speed training. Let's imagine you're going to do a bunch of movements of a certain technique. Let's say your instructor asks you, as a part of a class, to do 100 front kicks as fast as you can. That's a pretty common occurrence. Maybe not 100, but a sequence, a number. Maybe it's 10. I don't know about you, but I 
And most people can do two, three, maybe five really, really fast. And then they start to get slower. And the longer the time we consider, the slower they're going to get. So if we do a few, maybe we'll get faster. If we do the right number, we're definitely going to get faster. If we do too many, we're not going to get faster. Now, it's not for the same reason as when we're talking about resistance. But in this case, we're not getting faster because if we take a look at the average speed of those techniques, it's actually below what we're capable of doing. See, in order to get the central nervous system to respond and to adapt to the stimulus we give it, we have to challenge it. And that requires giving it only enough stimulus and the right kind of stimulus for it to say, oh, what I am used to is not good enough. I have to learn to get better. And it will. Now, I knew this conceptually going in because it's not that different a concept from strength. But there were a lot of difficulties in developing this program. And I'm going to share with you what I learned and how I had to learn it so that even if you have no interest in ever buying a program from Whistlekick and you want to go off and do your own thing, you can stand on my shoulders and you can learn some things. Now, I'm not going to give away everything, but I'll give you quite a bit. When we take a look at speed, there's a certain time domain. You can be really, really fast for somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds. And if you take a look at fights, if you take a look at point sparring, you know, any kind of combat situation. If you take a look at sprinting, you take a look at any sports endeavor, you'll see that there's a, a line in a lot of things at that 15, 20 second mark. You show me a point sparring match where people go full out for 20 seconds. They don't. Watch a boxing match. They engage and then they break away. They engage, they break away. And there's a lot of importance placed on conditioning, your ability to come back as much as you can. I've heard some people say conditioning wins fights, and I would not completely agree, but I think it is a critical component. Now, we're not talking about conditioning here, but we have the same issues around speed. We can't do two seconds of technique and expect the body to change. We also can't do 30 seconds and expect the body to change. We need the right amount. And depending on what you're doing and why you're doing it, that seems to be somewhere between 10 and 20 seconds based on both my research and my experimentation. Because yeah, I did all the stuff in this program. Of course, it was really tough to develop a framework for a speed development program for different martial artists of different styles at different levels, utilizing different techniques, because yes, you get to plug in your own technique on this and not be there to supervise. That's really hard. How do we break this down in such a way that it's self-directed? Well, that was a challenge. And the way we accomplished that was by making it as simple as possible. You go through this program, which is 90 days long, and you're doing a single technique through the entire time. The workouts we have, the order that they're in there, they're short. It doesn't take more than five, maybe 10 minutes from the time you warm up, and probably review a video and track your progress and do all of that. Because again, we're looking for that sweet spot. It's not two or three reps. It's not a hundred reps. You have to manage that really carefully. As I was digging in, there's very little research on getting faster as an athlete with the exception of running. Lots of research out there on sprinting. Track. People who sprint as part of basketball or soccer or football. It's all out there, but that's it. So what did I have to do? I had to dig in. I had to do my own research. I had to read scientific papers. I had to pull out not only the findings, but look into the physiology. How does all of this work so that we could develop something that made sense, that didn't leave people in a puddle on the floor so they couldn't go on to the rest of their day? Because if you've done sprint repeats, anybody out there ever run 800 meter sprints? Pretty much done for the rest of the day. It's exhausting. So we had to make sure that what we built would work and worked for everyone. 
and also took into account their lives and, oh wait, their martial arts training because we're trying to help you get better so you can go faster at whatever it is you're doing. And it works. And I think we did a really good job on that. Why does it work? It works because it's based on science. The science that we dug into works really well. We looked at the extension, the contraction of the movements. We looked at accuracy. We looked at response time. We looked at all the different things that go into you executing the technique at the right time in the right scenario. It's not 90 days of reaction drills. Don't worry. It's a lot more than that. But reaction is an important part of getting faster. Because there's no scenario out there where you need to execute a technique with speed that is not based on a response to something going on. It's always a reaction. You know why else this works? Because it's simple. Far too often, any program out there that you buy, it's complicated. It's based on you know, all these fancy movements and claims that it's going to do something, and, and maybe it does. But you know why it does something? It does something because it's new. And the body, the central nervous system, adapts to novel stimulus. But eventually, that fades. Simple, tried and true principles that come out of strength and conditioning, sprint research, martial arts training. That's what we've applied here. It's simple, but it's not easy. And it works because there is tons of history behind this. This is how the body adapts. It's by doing simple tasks that stretch your capability a little bit every day. If you're familiar with the two-minute martial arts program that we run, shout out to Justin, who does a phenomenal job with that. There's a reason that we put that program out every single day, because it's meant to get you to do work every single day, just a little bit. When we compare this to the strength and conditioning program, it was a heck of a lot harder. It was really challenging for me to do this. It took a long time. And it was harder because I didn't have much to refer to. See, with the strength and conditioning program, I was able to look at workouts that I've done and programs that I've purchased for my own personal development and start to apply martial arts principles and, you know, look to what our goals were there. But there was nothing that I could find that I could reference for this. And I don't just mean in martial arts. I mean anywhere. I'm sure there are people out there who have speed development programs for other sports. But I'm fairly certain this is the first one for martial arts. If you want a couple examples of what some of these drills look like, so you can take them, play with them yourself, maybe teach them, by all means, I'll give you a couple right now as examples of what's in here. And maybe it'll interest you and you'll want to take a step and check out the full program. Here's actually the first couple. We're used to training a technique in its entirety, from rest to extension to retraction. But what happens when we break that up? Imagine a back fist. You start from your ready position, and you extend it slowly, and then you retract it as fast as you can. And then you shake that off. And then you do it again. You extend it nice and slow, and you retract as fast as you can. Do half a dozen of those, maybe ten. And tell me that you're not starting to feel some fatigue. Now, you can also do the same thing in reverse. You extend as quickly as possible, and then you leave it, and you bring it back. Extend as quickly as possible, leave it, and then bring it back nice and slow. Obviously, you're not looking to develop bad habits there by only doing half of a movement, and the program takes this into account. It's not all this. There are plenty of drills that utilize the entire out and back of a technique, the extension, the retraction, the eccentric and concentric portions of the movement. But sometimes breaking things down into their simplest parts can have a pretty strong impact. Here's another one. Most of us know that excess tension in our muscles slows us down. So what about training techniques with as little tension as possible? Use as few muscles as you need to, to extend that technique until just before the point of impact. Let's say I'm doing a back fist and it's nice and loose. My hands even open a little bit and I extend it out as quickly as I can and at the last possible second, I tighten up that hand. I'm certainly not the first person to come up with this drill 
or the first drill or any of the drills. I'm not claiming any originality with these drills. What I am claiming is that the way we've arranged them and the progress, the science, the length of time you're doing them, the order, that's unique. And that adds up to some pretty cool stuff. I hope that you'll check it out. It's at whistlekick.com. And if you're interested, here's what's coming down the pipe. These programs, honestly, they've been a heck of a lot of fun for me to do. And I've got a roadmap of dozens of them that I want to get to. And it's going to take a long time. I'll probably never finish them all. Just because as I do one, I come up with ideas for others. As an example, now that we have the speed program to go with the strength and conditioning program, I'm fully expecting people are going to ask me, but Jeremy, how do I combine them? I want to get stronger and faster. Well, we're working on a hybrid where if you've purchased both programs, we're going to give you ways that you can combine them in sort of a, a sub program for free. And we're going to do a lot of that as we go forward. If you buy the different parts, think of them like building materials. You buy strength and you buy speed and you buy some of these others. And we're going to show you how to combine them so you can work on the things that are most important to you as a martial artist. As we do that work, as we upgrade these programs, the prices will continue to go up. They're as low as they will ever be right now. And that's part of my commitment to making sure you get as much value out of these as you can. As we improve things, you will maintain lifetime access to them, which means the people that support us earliest get the best value. That's important. It's lifetime access. Are there more programs coming? You betcha. In fact, the thing driving me to finish the promotion on the speed development program is the next one that I'm working on. Because I told myself, you can't start it until you finish letting everybody know about this one. So head to whistlekick.com, check out the speed development program, check out the strength and conditioning program if you haven't checked that one out. Don't forget, you've got a discount code. Podcast 15. Saves you 15% off. Saves you a few bucks. Show me better written programs for anybody, let alone martial arts, at the prices that we're offering. These are awesome programs, and they're, they're being really well received. If you want to check out more, maybe see the transcript for this episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check out this. Every episode we've ever done, we've got videos, we've got links, we've got social media. And if you haven't checked it out, we recently did a major overhaul on the episode list where you get additional columns. We've always had episode number, guest or topic, and a link, but now you've got links to their website, their social media. Uh their style, their location. We've done a lot of work on that and it makes that page really useful. In fact, I was using it today for something completely different. It had nothing to do with me being a wanting to connect with a guest. I, I just I, I needed that information. It was right there. Super handy. Of course, if you are willing to support the work that we're doing, you can purchase the speed development program or you could do one of many, many other things. I mentioned them at the top. You know what they are. I appreciate the support. For those of you who are contributing to the Patreon, thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, if you see somebody out there rocking a whistle cake hat or shirt or belt or whatever, say hi. Introduce yourself. Talk about the show. Talk about something. Make a new friend. Make a new training partner. We all have a chance to change the world here through martial arts. That's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. And you're part of that. So thank you for those efforts. If you want to email me for any reason, jeremy at whistlecake.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. <laughs>